Hello and welcome. I'm scratching my nose. Hello and welcome back to the Cars.coza YouTube channel. My name is Chiro De Siena. This is a Cherry Tigo 7 Pro and I'm about to tell you all about it. But before I do, let me tell you about how to sell your car on Cars.coza. We've made it extremely easy. Just go to Cars.coza forward slash sell dash car. We'll put the URL on the screen. Upload a picture of your car, tell us a bit about it. We'll send those details to all of our dealers, over 1,500 dealers. They'll bid on your car, you take the best price, and then, I don't know, go on holiday, buy something else, do whatever you want. You're rich now. Cars.coza. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. The Chinese have arrived on the South African market and let's just be honest, they're kicking ass. They're flying. They can't even keep up with the demand. You know, between Havel and now Cherry, they really have arrived on the market and just turned things a bit upside down. Their cars seem to represent really, really good value. And right now, South Africans are squeezed. Disposable income is squeezed. We're looking at buying down in the market. You see these trends, you see brands like Suzuki doing really, really well, but you still want a nice car at a nice price. And that is what cars like Jerry's Tito 7 Pro and Naval's H6 represent. So what is this? Well, it's slightly smaller than the Tigo 8 Pro, which is actually a seven seater. It's a bit bigger than the Tigo 4 Pro, actually quite a lot larger than that. If you relate it to say a Haval H6 or a Jolion, it's closer to an H6 in size than it is to a Jolion, quite a bit larger than a Jolion. And in terms of pricing, it slots in between the two as well. So 409,000 gets you into one of these, but I'm driving the top spec one for 444. It's called the executive model. Let's start with some power figures and underneath the bonnet, you're looking at 1.5 liters of turbocharged petrol chowing goodness, pumping out a massive 210 Newton meters, which actually is not that massive, to be honest, it's about as much as you get from a one liter Volkswagen Polo engine, but I don't feel like this car is underpowered. It's fine, it's doing its job. It's uh, actually quite an eager engine. Look, I haven't loaded the car up, you know, full of people and their things. Maybe it will struggle a little bit if you're gonna tow as well, but for day-to-day -day driving, perfectly fine. But that leads me to one of this car's downsides and it is proving to be a little bit thirsty. I haven't really been pushing it and I'm averaging 10 liters to the 100. Now, Cherry claims that you'll get 6.8 on average. I think that's pretty optimistic, to be honest. Look, the engine's quite new. It hasn't really been running yet. This car's only done 1100 kilometers. So I do suspect that its fuel consumption figure will improve, but right now, that's what it says on the dashboard. Bit of a complaint though I have about the drivetrain is the way the suspension's been set up. Now, it's odd because on the drive here this morning, I was on a bit of a twisty road and I was so impressed by the way this car cornered. The body roll is managed really well. Actually, corners pretty flat. It feels like a bit of a sports SUV, this car, which is nice in some ways. Not sure it's entirely necessary in what will probably be a family car, but the downside of that is that the suspension is quite firm. So as soon as you're away from roads that are perfectly surfaced, like the nice highways down here in the Western Cape, you do start to feel that this car is firmly set up. It doesn't really like road imperfections too much. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible. It's not a deal breaker for me. I'd be able to live with it, but just something to keep in mind. So let's say you're looking at a Cherry 7 Tigo Pro. Keep in mind, there's no amateur version of the Tigo 7. You can only get a professional version. And there are two different ones to choose from. There's a distinctive and the executive. I'm in the executive. Price difference is about 35,000 Rand. And the only difference I can really pick up from the spec sheets is that there's less airbags in the cheaper model, four instead of six. So you don't get curtain airbags in the cheaper model. You don't get this massive panoramic roof which is actually really nice. It's quite a nice touch that, and it's got an electric blind 
end as well and it opens and you don't get adaptive cruise control so if those three things are important to you then fork out the extra 35 grand and go for the top spec model Righty ho, the interior. Let's start with the key. Quite a nice key. I actually really like that. It's quite weighty as well, you know? Feels like you're getting your money's worth. That's pretty cool. I like that. And it's got a little slot for it over here as well. So you don't have to look for it every time you get in the car. Let me take you through what's happening here on the center stack. Now, I think I first saw the setup in the Range Rover Velar, and then it was in the Range Rover Evoque as well. Actually, most of the Range Rover Land Rover products have this setup. But down here is a second touchscreen for your aircon. And I quite like that. But what I like a lot is that they have a combination of touchscreen elements and physical button knob switch things. Because it's just so much easier to quickly change the temperature, there we go, or the fan speed using the buttons instead of having to stab at the touchscreen. So that's a really nice touch, actually. Ha, see what I did there. Uh, over here is quite an interesting button. Wait, let's turn that off, get rid of that. This brings up your cameras, and it is quite an impressive set of cameras. So if you go to 3D view, and then you can move around the car as well. Now these pop up when you're driving. So if you pull up to an intersection and it detects a curb on the right hand side, it'll bring up that specific view of the car so that you can see the curb so that when you turn right, you don't curb your back wheel. That's very clever as well. This is all standard, by the way. You don't have to pay extra for any of this, which is not the case with most manufacturers, <laughs> as you've probably discovered if you tried to buy a German car. Generally speaking, the level of luxury, the premiumness of the cabin is very impressive. Lots of leather everywhere. Look, it's artificial leather, but that's the case most of the time these days. Um, leather, nice soft touch leather up here. Nice leather armrest as well. Leather steering wheel, leather on the door handles. Nice brushed aluminium effect going down over there. All feels very good. It's a nice cabin feels very luxurious. It feels way more expensive than the price tag of the car would suggest. Now, because it's a fly-by-wire gearbox, what that means is that they can open up this whole area underneath here for storage, and there's a wireless charging pad down there. In terms of storage, you've got decent door pockets, two drinks holders, a very big bin in here with two USB ports as well. That's quite handy. And What's interesting is you can put a USB flash stick with movies or pictures on and it'll display on the screen. Now, I don't remember the last time I put a movie onto a USB stick, but if you still do that sort of thing, then you can watch the movies in your car. The differences between the entry-level distinctive model and this, the executive, are radar-guided cruise control. The controls are over here. You get six airbags instead of four, so you get curtain airbags. And you get this really nice panoramic roof which has an electric blind and which can also open. Very nice. In summary, a very impressive interior, especially at this price point. I'm not sure there's another car on the market at this price point which can match this. Welcome to the rear seats. Very nice seats, very comfy. They've got the angle of the bit where your butt goes and then the bit where your back goes spot on, in my opinion. I could do long journeys back here. And also just appreciate the attention to detail. Look how nice this door opener handle thing is. It's just so nicely designed. It's such a nice thing to look at. It's like they didn't forget about the back seats. And there's some cool tech back here. There's a little warning thingy over here. And if it detects a oncoming car, that'll show red so that you don't open your door into an oncoming car. That's a nice touch as well. Only one USB port. I don't know why they couldn't have just put two. I mean, how much can a USB port cost? Like three Rand 50? It's made in China anyway as well. Uh, air vents back here as well. You've got two drinks holders in there. And then quite importantly, a proper safety belt for your center passenger. And then this huge panoramic roof just adds to the very airiness and the spaciousness of the back seats. 
Now, using my highly trained boot space sensing eyes that I've developed over the years, I can tell you that that is not the largest boot in the segment. I think the Jollyon has actually got a bigger boot and that's a smaller car. But I do think it'll pass our cooler box test. Will this fit under the parcel shelf? We're about to find out. Oh, it's tight. <laughs> but look at that. So not too bad. It's about a, I'd say it's about a six cooler box boot. But look how much space you lose because underneath the boot floor is a full-size alloy spare. Look at that. It's huge. It's funny when you take wheels and tires off cars, how big they look in the back of the car. But also always nice to have a full-size alloy spare. I don't think people will be complaining about that. And then a nice touch, which you don't even have to pay extra for, is the power tailgate as standard. And you get this, what was that guy in X-Men called who had like one sunglass? What was his name? Cyclops. Something like that. That's what the tail light looks like. Now, as standard, there are a raft of safety features in here, which in a lot of other cars you would pay more for, but they do get a bit frustrating. So, lane departure warning. Now, obviously, if you cross a white line, it's not great, you should stay in your lane. You can deactivate the system by indicating, but sometimes you just need to quickly get around an obstacle or the best line through a corner might just be, you know, a little bit tight. And you cross the white line a little bit and then it beeps incessantly and you have to dig into the menus to turn it off but it does have fairly impressive tech like forward collision warning you know it's constantly scanning the road ahead and letting you know that you know an obstacle is coming up or whatever the case may be but it does some weird things sometimes this morning i was in stop start traffic and uh, I, I break to a halt from maybe 25 k's an hour and it put the hazards on <laughs> <laughs> which it should only really do when you're emergency braking. The person behind me must have been like, what the hell is this going on? Why has he got his hazards on? And maybe that's a setting, I don't know, buried somewhere in here. So, I, I mean, I appreciate the, all the safety tech. It's well-intentioned, but sometimes it can become quite intrusive. So just to recap your pricing and warranty, 409 gets you the entry-level model, 444 gets you this, the top spec, there's only two to choose from. And in terms of your warranty and service plan, it is pretty impressive. So it's a five year, 150,000, that's right off the bat. Then you might have seen in the press and on our website that there is a million kilometer engine warranty. Now that, I think it's a big headline grabbing kind of warranty, but it's quite specific. It only applies to the first owner and you have to have kept the vehicle through the warranty. So it only kicks in at the five year mark and you still have to be the original owner of the vehicle it can't be transferred to someone else so yes nice big warranty big bold claim but how many people are actually going to be able to make use of that i'm not terribly sure so let's say you're trying to choose between this the cherry and what's on offer from say another chinese brand like haval and of course there are other brands to choose from but not many of them play in this space i mean we're talking polo money here <laughs> this is about the same price as a new polo even cheaper actually for for the bottom spec model and you get quite a lot of suv for that money but my general impressions are that for similar money to the Haval Jolion, I would have one of these. I think the Haval H6 is a slightly nicer car and you can get one, but it'll be a lower, much lower spec one. You won't get as much tech as you do in here and as much spec for your money. So if you're looking between a top spec Haval Jolion and one of these, this would be my choice. Of course, you could go onto the second hand market and pick up something like, say, a second hand Kia Sportage or Hyundai Tucson, maybe a second hand RAV4, Mazda CX5, and you'll find lots of those on our site as well for similar money. But if you really want a new car and you really want all the sort of headache free motoring that comes with owning a new car, I think this is a good one to go for. 
I'd, I wouldn't ignore it. I'd put it on your short list at least. Go and check one out at a dealership. Right, thanks very much for watching. If you're looking for more Cherry reviews, we'll put the links in the description. Ah, you see, voice activation, something I didn't tell you about. Say the word Cherry and you can ask the car to do things like open the driver's window. Already closed. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so I can't say this car's brand name anymore. anymore. If you're looking for more info on other Shmeri products, got away with it. We do have video reviews and written reviews on the Tigo 4 Pro and the Tigo 8 Pro done by my esteemed colleague Ashley Oldfield. So go check out those reviews. We'll put the links in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, give it some thought, you know. Tonight, over dinner, discuss it with your family. Should you subscribe to the Cars and Goes channel? It's a good idea. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start talking crap now. Bye. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you've obviously found the Cars at Coza YouTube channel, but did you know we are on a host of other social platforms, including TikTok, which means that we're like down with the youth and stuff. Anyway, we also have this really cool WhatsApp newsletter, which you can subscribe to by using WhatsApp. The number's in the description below. And we're on all the usuals, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that sort of thing. I don't know, someone else worries about that. I just worry about YouTube. Thanks for watching. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. Cars.coza.